Next up, um, we have Dr. Wei Chen, professor in the Center for Magnetic Residence Research at the University of Minnesota. Dr. Chen received his bachelor's in physical chemistry from Fudan University and went on to study at WashU in St. Louis, where he received his PhD. In 1994, he joined the world-renowned Center for Magnetic Residence Research. Dr. Chen is a fellow for the International Society of Magnetic Residence in Medicine and the American Institute of Biomedical Engineering. He serves as a reviewer for NIH grant proposals and manuscripts of scientific journals and is a member of the editorial board of imaging journals. His research focuses on developing ultra high field magnetic resonance imaging and spectroscopic imaging technologies to study brain cellular energy metabolism, neuroenergetics, brain function, and dysfunction. He has a talk today entitled New Way for Quantitatively Imaging Brain Energy Metabolism Using Deuterium MRS Imaging and Isotope Label Glucose at Ultra High Field. So, Wei, the floor is yours. Okay, so let me see the why I cannot put the whole screen. Uh, you, do you see the screen or that? Not yet. Can you try to share it once more? Uh, sorry, maybe let me try the again. I've been live. Yep. Now we can see it. Okay, great. Thank you, you know, for a nice uh, introduction. And this is the first time I joined this uh, kind of interesting meeting here. Yeah. So this is our you know, imaging center. So we specialize for the technology, push it very, very high field, you know, for human, for animal, in vivo imaging research. Yeah. So today I will focus on the uh, kind of brain energy, metabolism, and so, because why it's so important, you know, uh, for our brain, even don't thinking or like a resting state, you know, the neural firing, so utilize all kind of ATP, but meanwhile, actually the neuron, neuron signaling and all use the ATP energy too. So how can, you know, sustain this kind of ATP in the brain? So it's very simple. We breathe in the air and, uh, you know, take oxygen, we eat the food and we produce the glucose. So this, uh, you know, how to pump the blood, you know, bring the glucose, the oxygen, go to the brain. So usually it's a kind of simple effect that the brain size is only 2% of body weight, but it utilizes almost 20%, you know, the energy, you know, kind of feel. So this is a very in proportion though. So in the case, that, you know, the brain is very expensive and, uh, you know, using the energy and it's also very important you know, for support uh, spontaneous uh, or evoke the neural activity, then, the, you know, support the brain function. And uh, actually many uh, neurological uh, disease, you know, have been linked to this kind of impaired energy metabolism. Yeah. So this is, I took it as a very simple figure because the brain, you know, utilizes the most the glucose in a normal situation, even on the disease situation. So the glucose actually goes to the glycolysis and then become a two- Branch, although this is a very, very simple, you know, the pathway here, yeah. So the one actually can, it's like an uh, anaerobic glycosis, so they can produce a form like a lactate, but the majority par, uh, uh, parobate, which is generated from glucose, enter TC cycle, and then becoming the CO2, and, you know, and, uh, but from energy-wise, uh, you know, the mitochondria, uh, the much, much important, because the one glucose consumed, they can produce more than 30, you know, the ATPs. But in meanwhile, if it goes to the lactate, only produce two ATPs. So this is for a normal cell. However, for many conditions, the metabolic repro uh, reprogram could happen. One kind of extreme case uh, for the uh, tumor, you know, so-called the warp of the fat. So they're shifting this kind of metabolism towards the glycosis, uh, produce much more lactate. But in meanwhile, they suppress the TC cycle and they reduce the kind of intermediate in the related to the mitochondrial metabolism. Yeah. So for us, actually, we thought about say, uh, can we use the MI imaging machine, you know, to develop some technology which can non-invasively, you know, kind of assess it, this kind of multiple pathways. Okay. And then we can, you know, come back and look the in a normal brain function or the disease of the brain. Yeah. So that's actually in the past, uh, maybe almost like 10 years. Uh, we developed some technology based on the deterring, uh, 
uh, MR spectroscopy imaging <laughs> from the previous talk, some are determined even to be uh, trouble for like a broadening spectra in other ways. But for this one, actually, <laughs> you know, we fall in love with the detroit and I can share results. Hopefully can convince you this maybe it's like a new way to look at like a brain at, uh, energy metabolism. So look at the his uh, history and uh, uh, the Professor Joe Ackerman from Washington University, actually, uh, he is my PhD advisor. And when I worked at his lab, I was doing other projects, but meanwhile, he published one paper, you know, used the deuterium water as like a perfusion tracer. So you can IV injection to the, say like a, you know, red uh, body. And then you can see this label company shooting very high, okay. They quickly decay, okay, because like the perfusion tracer, okay, they go to the brain, then leaving that. But how, how fast they're leaving actually relate to the perfusion. Uh, processing. So that was almost like uh, 30 years ago. Then the, maybe around the 10 years ago, another professor in the uh, Case Western, actually, who was my you know, very close colleague and friends, and uh, he had all kinds of innovative ID, and he was a professor in chemistry department, although he not a great for in vivo imaging, but he created some unique ID, you know, this is a one of them. So he used to unify, label the glucose, and, uh, you know, you can see the simple spectrum and a couple recent peaks, and one is a natural abundance of water. Okay, there are other peaks, uh, you know, from the glucose. Then he injected this glucose into the mice, then looked the whole head, you know, see what happened. So many saw the two uh, signals, one is like the, you know, glucose here, and another just like a deuterium water, okay? Because somehow glucose was metabolized, become a final product, you know, like water. So if you look at the dynamic, and you can see the, you know, the glucose reach the peak, they slowly come down because the brain consumed the glucose, but meanwhile, they gradually produce a lot of water there too. So if you look at the title, he kind of tries to say this maybe can look at the oxygen consumption through this kind of technology, Okay, so we looked very carefully. We also had a discussion with him. So I thought maybe not easy. Okay, bef uh, even before that, we also developed some O17 technology. Okay, you can ask the subject you're breathing this isotope labeled oxygen gas. They go through the metabolism. So this is only two minutes. Okay, they also produce the labeled water, but two minutes all, already increased like more than 50% labeled water, which is metabolized from oxygen. But now if you look at this uh, deterring, even took us 30 minutes, only increased 50%. So that mean a lot of water or metabolic diluted uh, through this uh, processing. So maybe not very specifically to relate to oxygen in the metabolism. But uh, meanwhile, I say, well, we still have a lot of information. So maybe let's forget the oxygen consumption rate but we can look at like a glucose metabolism, lactic metabolism, and the TC cycle. So that's we work at that, use a little bit simple one. So we ask, you know, Cambridge, you know, isotope, just to provide the some simple glucose. So you label that like a two proton by the deuterium on the carbon six. So you usually call the D66, yeah. So then you follow the biochemistry, you know, inside the, say, the brain cell, and they become a pyruvate, and then some small fraction goes to the lactate, but a majority private enter TC cycle. But TC cycle, they can exchange with the glutamate through, uh, through the alpha ketone. Yeah. So this can label on the glutamate, you know. So then we did some study, and this is the red brain. This is before inject the glucose, we see natural abundance of water. This is like a 15 minutes acquisition in the brain. So you can see. Uh, you can appreciate that, you know, signal to noise ratio is quite beautiful here. Yeah. Then just injected that. Now we start uh, see the glucose, okay, and also the GLX, okay, through the TC cycle labeling and also lactate. That's, uh, you know, the glycosid pathway. Yeah. Then it's a very dynamic. If you wait some time, you can see the glucose come down because the, uh, you know, bring consumer the glucose and also produce more labeled water. But meanwhile, they produce more GLX. That's a mix the glutamate and the glutamate because from this spectrum, we cannot separate it to glutamate, glutamate. So it's called mixed GLX. Yeah. They also see the lactate too. Yeah. So we saw the kind of couple important, you know, pieces of the information. This information can be linked to 
the glucose consumption rate or we call cerebral metabolic rate of glucose because we can measure glucose dynamic information here. Meanwhile, we can detect the lactate so we can determine the lactate formation rate. And meanwhile, also GLX linked to the uh, VTC cycle. That's the HTC cycle right here. So this is show the one example. Okay, we didn't do imaging, just use one kind of antenna, look the entire the red brain. And you can see very dynamic uh, and the glucose shooting high and then come down. But we compared two conditions. One is the deep anesthesia, usually use like a 2% isoflurane. Uh, for the anesthesia, but another like a morphine. Okay, so that condition animal didn't move, but it's like a brain activity, almost it looks like the normal wake of the condition. Yeah, so you see the dynamics are very, very different. Okay, for the red lung, because the morphine is a high activity, so the shooting not very high because the brain already started to utilize a lot of uh, glucose, then the decay also much faster here, right? If we compare the deep anesthesia, because brain didn't use too much glucose and the same dose of glucose injection, they can reach a much high P, then the decay also much is slow. So if you take the imaging here, you can see that, you know, glucose, uh, you know, imaging already very, very different. Yeah. Meanwhile, you can see the high activity, they produce much more GLX than the deep anesthesia. Okay. So we can utilize this information build the modeling and then compare this to two condition. Indeed, uh, we see morphing the metabolic rates for the glucose consumption TC cycle almost uh, near like uh, two times higher than the deep anesthesia. So it's a very dynamic uh, and a very sensitive for the brain you know, activity and the metabolic activity. Yeah. So later say, well, uh, if you think of the human experiment, right? And uh, we want to get rid of the kind of IV injection, you need a nurse put the Needle that too. So in that case actually we did this kind of seed experiment. One is the IV injection, another just to use put the tube into the animal stomach, just to mimic like a drinking. Okay. So you can see dynamics are very different. You know, IV infusion, you know, glucose shooting very high, then decay. But drinking take a time. Glucose goes to stomach, liver, back to blood strength. Okay. So you can see gradual builds up. Yeah. But if you this two data say use our cardiac model, it should get a very consistent, you know, the number. Okay. And also it's interesting if we wait a little bit time, if you look at the signal, it's quite not too much different between infusion and the oral drinking. So this could be possible in the future. We don't need the IV, you know, the injection or preparation anymore. So you can just ask the subject drinking, you can do this kind of imaging study. Yeah. So many advantages for deterring. And it's like a quadruple relaxation. So they you know, relax much fast and also feel independent. So that means at the ultra high field, we can get much more sensitive for deterring imaging. Yeah. And also we know deterring very stable, non-radioactive and the safe for isotope, you know, the uh, you know. And also maybe I don't talk too much, and relaxation much is short. That, that means we can average more signal within the same you know, scan time. This all help the input signal to noise ratio. Yeah. Then the natural boundless water, as I showed before, because we know the what concentration present this uh, you know, signal, so we can use it as an internal reference to the absolute quantification for all other metabolites. So this is another easy task for most uh, you know, imaging study, but this one actually can do easily for that too. Yeah. And uh, although if you machine you uh, if you want to do this kind of study, you need some hardware development. And, but it's not too difficult, you know. Okay, then we thought about what's the application that, yeah. Because the beginning I showed the so-called metabolic reprogram and the tumor is the best case, okay. So based on tumor biology, you will expect that in the tumor, they will elevate the glucose consumption and also lactate production, but they suppress the TC cycle, yeah. So the uh, around the 2016, we proposed the thing using this labeled ratio between lactate and the GLX as the very sensitive index to present the Warburg effect in the tumor. Because in the tumor, lactate shooting high and the uh, GLX comes down. So this ratio is much higher in the tumor than the normal tissue, yeah. So we did the animal testing. Okay, this is, you can see the left side tumor and the right is a control. So th this one, if you look at the tumor, you can see GL, uh, glucose comes down a little bit and the GLX comes down a little bit, but the lactic goes up, yeah. But if you're more aggressive with the tumor, you can see this uh, trend is much, much stronger. 
but this tumor GLX almost disappeared. But meanwhile, they produce much more lactate and also glucose coming down too. So this ratio is a shooting very high. Yeah. So you can do imaging. Okay, you can see very nice, like a hot, you know, spot, which is nicely leaning to the, you know, like structure imaging brain tumor. Yeah. But if you do a histology study, as you see that it's very nice between the histology and the uh, structure imaging. But on the other hand, metabolic imaging already showed uh, more problem even beyond the, this kind of core, yeah? So we believe this may be imaging put, uh, could be, you know, like an earlier diagnosed, it's possible, you know, for uh, providing even more, you know, uh, useful information there too, yeah? Also, we uh, work with the machine learning, AR, and try to improve the, you know, sensitivity. We can look at the intratumor variation because this for uh, oncology very, very important, you know, when decide how to treat the patient. But I don't have too much time because so much information here. But the point, we can push it quite high resolution, okay? Even like a structured imaging just shows some tumor that, but within they see that this is a metabolic, uh, very, very different, shows some region much aggressive than the other region. Yeah. So this may be very important, like a surgeon, to make a decision which part of the brain tumor you want to take out. Yeah. So now we thought that a brain in a, for the human, and unfortunately, our machine didn't allow us to do like the Detroit imaging, although our lab pioneered for the O17. So the operation frequency is very similar between O17 and Detroit, but because a few megahertz away, machine shut down because we didn't do safety calibration. Yeah. So during that time, Yale University, they used like the research machine at the 4T and, uh, you know, did some human kind of tumor imaging that saw very similar behavior as we report in the animal, you know, somehow too. So after that, actually a lot of people jump in this field and, uh, you know, to do this kind of detrain imaging, yeah. So later we got also energy funding. So our lab just built this kind of coil because the company even uh, didn't have this kind of technology, yeah. So this coil, we can do the beautiful structure imaging at the seven Tesla, and also you can do like a detrain imaging. This is a natural bounding of water, two half minutes, uh, you know, the and also 0.7 cc, the box size, and we got a very beautiful imaging here. So now we can do a real human experiment. Yeah. So it's very simple. We bring subject into the magnet. You can do structure imaging, everything like a, a preparation, and then pull table out. Okay. Subject don't move, just only drinking this, uh, you know, glucose and uh, usually like maybe 40 uh, gram or uh, 50 gram. Yeah. Then the meanwhile, because we wanted the kinetic study quantify the met metabolic rate, so we do the blood sampling. They also do whole brain imaging. Okay, so this is show the one example like a two voxel. One is from gray matter area, another white matter. You can follow this kind of kinetic uh, very beautifully. You can see glucose change, uh, GLX lactate, and also water change too. So now we build the kinetic model and fit to this kind of timing cost. And uh, this is show the one kind of imaging, okay? This is uh, after drinking, wait like uh, two hours, and you do like a 3D imaging, look at the GLX. This is labeled the GLX from the glucose, yeah? From the bottom of the brain to the top of the brain, you can see gray matter, white matter, very different. They accumulate much more in the gray matter because of high neuron activity than the white matter, yeah? Or you can choose one slice, Look the evolution of the timing, okay, from the beginning before the drinking, not too much GLX there, okay. Then after that, you see the builds up, builds up, and also the accumulate more in the gray matter, white matter. So such a quality imaging also covered the entire brain made us the first time we can calculate the imaging three metabolic rates. One is the glucose consumption rate, TC cycle rate, and the lactate rate. And if we do like a regression, you can see white uh, gray matter has a much higher rate than the white matter, almost a two to three times high. Yeah. And then we thought, what's the application you know, for the human? Yes, the brain tumor, definitely the beautiful case here. So we have a neurosurgeon who identified this unique patient. So if you look at the clinical imaging, you see chunk of the uh, frontal lobe had a lesion, right? You see this imaging like a white uh, contrast aging, it's like a darker. So for surgeon, what do they do? You want to take the whole chunk of the brain tissue or maybe some tissue within that's still kind of, vet, you know, still working, but you don't need to take out. So he brought the patient to our center. We did the imaging. Okay. Wow, very interesting. We only saw the two small islands 
within this lesion actually have a trouble here. We call that positive uh, zone. So then the surgeon uh, brought the patient back. Okay, he chose the two locations. One is the heart spider here. Okay, took the biopsy. Another is a neighborhood, but it's still within this lesion. Yeah. Then he very excited and say, wow, so exciting because uh, in the positive region, he saw tons of uh, tumor cells. But the other region, still in the lesion, they don't see the tumor cell. Okay, so this is a very kind of you know important because in principle we can create like a three D tumor imaging. Either can help the or guiding the biopsy in the future. I wish someday maybe they don't need the biopsy anymore. Okay, just based on this imaging, they can decide how they perform uh, you know the surgery. Yeah. So why it's important? Okay, in the current uh, the PET imaging is the most. Uh, kind of establish the, you know, clinic, you know, although it's not popular because most hospitals don't have a PET machine. This is, uh, I took a one picture from review paper, yeah. From the structure imaging, obviously something wrong here, right? But this is F2DG imaging, okay? So if you look at here, say, well, something wrong here, but you're not sure because the reason is brain glucose activity is so high right, for like this region normal, you can see gray matter yellowish, white matter is a little bit low, it's a like brownish, so it's not uniform. And also DC baseline is very, very high. So if a tumor something change, you create like a, some plus or minus a change on the bigger DC label, so that's actually reduce the tumor contrast versus the normal tissue. But on the other hand, the determined imaging, background very silent, okay, if the tumor, they scar high. So that makes the physician or neuro, uh, radiologist much easier to judge where the problem region too. So that's, a, in a summary, it's very simple. Now after technology development, we already push the high, high spatial temporal resolution and at the you know, 70 clinical machine, which approved by the FDA, you can use that for the you know, brain uh, disease diagnosed. Yeah, and uh, this technology is very sensitive for like the uh, physiology, energy metabolism, you know, sent to gray matter, white matter, or the healthy and disease uh, situation. Yeah. And this may be first technology, one measurement made possible, you can measure three important metabolic rates quantitatively. So this is very powerful to look at the so-called metabolic reprogram, okay, because we have all information, yeah. So finally, we think maybe, you know, uh, have a clinical future there, okay, at least 70, or maybe some, you know, company of build the 5 t yeah. So finally, actually, a lot of people uh, supported that, and also interesting, previous talk, uh, you know, speaker mentioned the wife, and a similar situation for me too, you know, Dr. Professor Shao Hongsu is my wife, and also we have a very strong team working together, and also have a lot of people uh, support and also engage your family made that possible. Yeah. Finally, thank you uh, for your attention. Yeah. Thank you so much for a wonderful talk. There is one question for you in the Q&A. Um, we don't have time to answer it live, but if you could answer it in the chat, that would be great. Uh, okay. Yeah. Maybe I can just uh, write back. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Thank you.